I'm spending the day with Rob and Jan at ProCam Solutions, uh, not far from where I live here in Perth. Today, we're going to spend the time conceptualizing the interior fit out. Now, I have quite a few demands on them, and I, I believe that with a different approach, we can we can achieve what I managed to achieve with my previous troop carrier, but more than just that. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for building four wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join the Patreon family now. And of course, what we're turning into a camper is actually not a big vehicle. We have to be very careful with how we use every square inch of the inside of this vehicle. Gonna, right. Okay, so I'll look just for camera, as you do. As you do. <laughs> All right, now, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about the shortcomings of my previous troop carrier. Yeah. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna we want to start fresh. We are starting fresh, okay. You, st you, did, a, you did a job for a client after we'd had a brief discussion, yes. and I quite liked it. Actually, I really liked and it. And that's why we called you in to yes. have a look. So, what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna tell you what I want. And I'll tell you what you can. And you're gonna tell me <laughs> what I can have. Now, normally, in a situation like this, if your fitment center is, they should ask you first up, what kind of camping do you do? Yeah. That was, should be yeah. their first question. Yeah. You know because what kind that, of camping I do. That all determines on how you're going to set the yeah. vehicle up. But it's with you? Yeah. yeah. So it's far easier end. to do flashy stuff for somebody who's a, who loves weekend trips and nothing more. Yeah. More demanding and more compromises to somebody like myself, like doing long distance trips yeah. and living out of the vehicle for long periods of time. Yeah. So you've got to have specific things in there, like more water, yes. more storage, yeah. refrigeration, electrics. So, this is what I. This is how I see it working. Yeah. I see this part of the vehicle, this side of the vehicle, yeah. being from the from the seat all the way to the back, approximately this high, so I can sit on it comfortably. Okay. Sit on it comfortably and work inside the vehicle. With the roof closed or open? Very good question. So here's the thing. I want to be able to use this space to sit on, yep. lounge about, and even sleep if that isn't open. So I want this to be, part of this to be, a sleeping area, yeah. flat, with that, because I am gonna do a roof tent uh, conversion. Yeah. So this is gonna be a camper conversion. But I had a situation in extreme weather where I couldn't sleep because of the flapping. Yeah. I would have loved to have been able to close it and just, just curl up it in the back, but I couldn't. Good morning. Terrible, terrible night. Well, this is where I ended up last night. As you can see, not the same place where I went to sleep. About three o'clock in the morning, I finally got to sleep and I'm in a different place because uh, the wind veered, the noise from the generator across the water became so loud, woke me up, that was sleep gone. So then I moved to find another place after driving along the track in the middle of the night, found another place, pointed the car into wind, except uh, I was in the teeth of the wind and it was, it was blowing gale force. So the whole vehicle was rocking. So I packed it away again and eventually ended up here. So and also during the day, a big open flat area is really useful real estate. To me, if you've got too many boxes and things and areas where items have dedicated spaces to be packed, there's very little real estate to put stuff while you're actually camping. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But in the same sense, you still want certain things to have a designated spot. Precisely. Some things yeah. must have a dedicated spot. Yeah. So that's why a large flat area here 
and we have to work out how best to use this because this is going to be a very important storage space. Yeah. Because on that side, we means that we might be able to go a little bit higher in places. Mm -hmm. I still think that the fridge is probably going to be best behind the driver's seat. It's a good, and especially the if you're going to put the gold wing in. And we're going to put a gold wing. So it's an And we're going to put a shower in. Yeah. You don't use your fridge while you're inside the car. <laughs> well, you really? can if you, you know want to, I mean, but you but generally you don't. You generally eat but you from can outside. if you have to. Yeah. Okay. And so this area here can actually be quite high, but I want a workspace, so maybe it's just a slide-out workspace. I don't. This is where you yeah. come in. Yeah. So we need to use this, make maximum use of the height. Yeah. Because we're not using any of the height here, we're going to have to find storage space somewhere else. So maybe we use it there. And the height's always best on this side anyway, because yes. you always, you never want to cl close that window up. This window has to stay yeah, open. That has to stay open. Has to stay open for visitors. When you're visual, yeah. when you're turning out in has traffic, you can, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's a no. That's a no-brainer. That must stay glass. Yeah. Okay. So we can actually put three gull wings for access. Yeah. We can talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, but as part of this, the gull wings are definitely a consideration because now if I have access, well then access to what? So if you're going with the gull wings and you decide you're going to go a gull wing box. You've got to decide whether you want access from inside and outside or just outside just so that you when you're designing it you know what you're putting in there basically because that they are a designated spot that's yes. definitely a designated spot yes. it's not a, not a stuffy hole yes so that'll affect on how high we go and what we put on the inside Okay, that does, it affects the height, because it would be no point in having a gull wing to the back of a box, but maybe it's a, it's a, if that's a kitchen box, it can be accessed from both inside and outside if we have a gull wing. Yep, yep, which I have done before, where I've allowed um, the one guy, he, he basically lives in the back of his car, um, so he wants to be able to make a quick copper or pot noodle, that kind of thing. That was his kitchen pantry, actually it was on that side. Um, and we actually formed a backboard so that when you're sitting it was at an angle so that was your backrest but then the actual backrest on that section we pulled down and he had full access to his pantry there for his quick stop if you just wanted to stop and have a quick cup of bread cleaned every rain sit in the car he just got access to the outside as well so no need to go out in the rain and all the rest of it the way I would set up yeah. Is we start off with that side of the vehicle. Yeah. That's where you're going to be sitting. First thing we need to sort out is the height. Yes. Of your city. Yes. What I found in Troop is, is the ideal height is a milk crate. Milk crate. A milk crate. That's what I use them to measure. Okay. <laughs> All right. And they're approximately 340 mil. Right. Which sounds really low. Right. But what you've got to take into account is when you've got your roof closed. True. You don't want that right angle legs sitting position. You need more of a, a sort of a squat position if you're sitting square. But what right. you've got to remember is you've got all this leg room right the way through. That's why we have a backboard. Because then you can turn slightly and stretch your legs out. Oh. And just relax there. Oh, okay. Now, because of the height of it, it doesn't affect you that much because now you're stretching out. Okay, okay, now I like that. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I like that a lot. Because even though we can go higher and your head could be touching the top, you'll find that when you're sitting in there, you're going to start uh, crunching over. Yeah, if the, if the, if the yeah. roof is if right there, even, you'll, you'll, close, even if it's this close, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna crunch over. You will. I'll lower it down a little bit. So here's the thing, okay, so with all that in mind, I need to carry 100 litres of water. Yep. Okay, and I want to do the same shower system as I had with my previous troop carrier, with a few so the, adaptations. The Egon system. With the Egon yep. water hub, okay. Yep. Um, but it's got to be as good as it was then, <laughs> okay. Yep. And um, we, we need uh, enough place for batteries and the electric system. But the big question I have is that, is that, is that water system and the ability to carry at least two additional 
jerry cans, whether they be fuel or water, in addition, and then I must and must be able to strap them down somewhere yep. safely. That in addition to all of the things that we're doing now. Okay. So with that in mind, I would go across the front, spanning the width with the water tank. Right behind the seats. Right behind the seats. I agree totally. But I wouldn't actually go tight up to the seats. Okay. Or would I? Yes, I would. I'll go tight up to the seats with that. Then, like we said before, fridge behind the driver's yeah. side. Yeah. And then under that, your electrics. Yeah, that works that, very that well. Works that's, that really that's works. An that, ideal yes, it is. Thing because you're it not because you want to lift <coughs> your fridge up anyway. Yeah. So yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can everything can go under there. Water up everything. Okay. And straight off. The that's tank. what we've got to. We've got to keep that in mind because those are not negotiables yeah. because of the kind of travelling I do. They have to yeah. go in. Yeah. And another thing I'd really like. A simple bread thing. Maker. Uh, a, no bread maker. <laughs> <laughs> a place to put my shoes. They, when you're in the trooper, you climb yeah. down from the top or you're standing, the, the shoes get in the way and they drive me crazy because there's no place for them. I want a place where I can it's, kick them underneath. Uh, and you've done it exactly there, it's already in. Okay, so yeah. you've got, yeah. that, that I think it was in because, your previous design, yeah, something like that. you've got to lift up, and you, where you lift up above the wheel arch, Yeah. what do you do, that, that bit below? Yeah. It's a perfect little okay. poke hole. There you go. And you just there you go. pull your shoes in. It's little things like that yep. that actually make a big difference. Yep. Why does the awning have to be on the left? There's no real reason. A lot of people go with that side because of pulling up bay boys, that kind of thing. It's a lot easier just to pull the awning out on that side. But how often are you going to pull the awning out when you're on the road I don't, side? I don't. And you're not going to be on the road side anyway. No. You don't no, know where there's roads. No, no, it's not <laughs> so a big, that's no, not a big so issue for me. A, and look, in a way it would make even more sense because then you can have it right next to your fridge. Okay. But on a downside. I've thought of a downside, what's your downside? Are you putting a tracks table on that side? So, <clears throat> yes, the tracks table is such a magic thing. Yeah. And for me, when I had mine, the one thing I used every day was the tracks fail, table. Morning and evening. Me too. Tracks table. Me and too. That's why I had that window set up as my quick stop, and I had everything in there. I, used I to did too. But I'm there. saying, I'm saying, with this configuration, hmm. should we not just swap sides? We can still have a max table, the max table on that side. We can have the awning on that side. The question there is then where do we put the shower? Can we put a max side on that side? Why can't you put a max? Well, you've got your fuel. Oh, you've got a don't. Of course. I'm not 100%. We'd have to ask, I think ask the boys a quick pitch, but. I think you can, but yeah. you're right. It's a, it is a question. Is there enough space between yeah. the two filler caps yeah. to fit it? As it happens, yes. I may have one here. Okay, well then we can <laughs> so try it out. Why not try it? So it would normally sit around about there. Yeah. And as you can see, you're going to be covering. Okay. We can come up a little bit. Oh, it's so close. And if you moved it further down here, I could go as far as that. Yep, yeah, and you'll you'll nope. over it there. Over it there. Yeah. So that's not it then. So it has to be. So that's. Very close. It looks like it will go. It's very, close. very close. Then what would we do with the shower? Because the nice thing before with the shower was, open it up, top of the fridge was the kind of a shower, put your towel there, put your shampoo there, open the gull wing yeah. and have a shower. But you're also going to have a gull wing on this side. I'm going to have a gull wing on this side. So, so that would be the- So having your shower towards the front of the vehicle, you're going to It have would be towards, towards the, the back. We would have longer pipe runs, not a train smash. Yeah. What, it's a small compromise. I'm thinking that that's. <laughs> I'm thinking that we should actually do kitchen and everything on that side, mm. and not have a box here. Yeah. But have the shower going on this side. I'm yeah. thinking.
Rob will now do a rough sketch based on what we've spoken about this morning. Andrew, I think I've got something. Pretty good. <coughs> Very good, actually. It's a little sketch of it's only rough. And he's now knocked up a quick mock-up that will give us an idea of heights, widths and sizes. Maybe a touch lower, but then he's got a back crest in there as uh, well, okay. which we can narrow down to any size. So the drawer will, be able, will come this way? Yep. Okay. So we'll allow a setback so for my feet. more foot room. Yep. The drawer will come back in there 100 mil. Yep. So that will go right back to there. Right. So it will draw out to. There. Yeah, yeah. And it, then, if there is any ever any problems, you can take the drawer out. Right, and, and I can room. access the drawer from when I'm sitting inside the vehicle, as well as outside the vehicle. Standing there, you can still access the drawer. Yeah. All right. Now. Yes. Because we're putting the drawer there. Yes. The pokey hole that we were talking about for shoes. Yes. Why don't we do a very narrow draw there and wrap to line it? I worry about all the weight that's added every time you draw it. No weight. No draw runners. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so just, just on on a, um, either a Teflon runner or something along oh, those okay. lines. So with this one, we'll do it on runners. Yeah. On that one, we'll just do it so that it is literally a shoe box. So that way you can just take it out, hose it down when it gets too full of mud, and put it back in. Can we can we leave that till the last? Yeah, yeah. Because I sometimes yeah. wonder, pull off shoes, slide them out of the way. Simple as that. Yeah. As opposed to pull off shoes, pull out the drawer, put them in, close the drawer. Yeah. Yeah, it wants to be a lot further back, doesn't it? Yeah, it would need to be a lot further back. Yeah. Height-wise, definitely not high. No, no higher than that, no. no. That's probably about right, though. Mm. And then I think once you've got that sliding out... Right, back was upright, <laughs> which it would be if the tent was up. Yeah. If the tent was... I would yeah. have. But would you get away with going any lower? You could go slightly lower. Yeah. Spin that box. It's going to be the walkway narrower at the moment. Oh, okay. That gives yeah. us yeah. an idea of the height. Yeah. It's a little low. <laughs> thinking about the, the bend in my knees. Yeah. Split the difference, and I reckon you've got but it perfect. If mm. you're looking at putting your feet in there. That is true. Actually, that's easier. Yeah. Because, because you, you have an in, you have a your unit can come into here, yes. but we can push the foot space in. Right, you're going to need to do that yep. to be comfortable. Yep. It's difficult to know whether you you need a backrest at all. Actually, mm. I don't know if you do. It all depends on how. I mean, if you're going to be working on your computer, you're not really going to be. So now I can't back, push are back are now because the thing's going to. I can go back a little bit. Yep. Okay. So that there, if I had a cushion behind me, that actually would be quite comfortable. Mm. I could push out my legs out about probably about that far. That would actually be quite a nice thing. I think this is the height you should go with. Yep. And that's height is set. Yep. Travel body there, accessed outside only. Yep. And there's my kitchen. There's my fridge. Full length. Storage, storage, draw out the back. Yep. So then as we get to the point <coughs> where we've got the carcass and everything built. Yeah. And hopefully we've got the roof on. Yeah. Or the convertible. Yeah. Then we'll have a look and play with backrests and that kind of thing. Yes. Because everything will be in place. Yes. And then we can, can play, play with backrests. We can play with the backrest. Okay. We're doing well. Mm. Yeah. Struggling a bit with the uh, sunlight coming in, so I just want to uh, move the car, pull it forward. 
quickly, but I don't want to start it up, so I'll do this. Yeah, that's good. The biggest challenge, of course, is a water tank. It's such a big item, and we have to play with products that are readily available or decide whether we Custom -like. make our own. If I think about useful versus less useful real estate, yeah. this area that I'm sitting in now is not very useful. No. Because I can't access it from outside it's, the vehicle. It's dead space. It's almost dead space. Yeah. So that's where we put the boiler, so we put the electrical systems, and we put water tank, perfect place for a water tank. Yeah. This is using a lot of space. From here, honestly, from here there to there, mm -hmm. that's really useful real estate. So I'm not. Could this go under the drawer? Yeah. If we so tilt it turn this it, way. You can turn it and we can get those made, extend the width, we can extend the height, we can drop the height, whichever way. See, I had thought about a full width tank far forward as possible for weight distribution. Yeah. The trouble is with that, we also want to put a, um, a cool drink fr fr fridge between the seats and that comes back quite far right into that, that piece useless of real estate. Area. <laughs> that useless area suddenly become really useful yeah. because of that fridge. So I'm wondering if we do this type of tank, but we use this piece of real estate here. In other words, we do a cutout like this, except the cutout is for the fridge. So Will we get across the front? Across the front, full width, far forward as possible, but with a cutout like this. But the cutout is in the middle where the fridge would go, and probably the same height as this. How many liters is this? This is around about sixty-five, I believe. Look, we might not be able to get a hundred. We do have the other yeah. option we've been speaking about for a while about a smallish tank, it's about a 40 litre tank that goes in front of the rear bumper. It's not a great place for it in terms of weight distribution, yeah. but it's the backup water tank. I kind of like the idea of actually having two tanks. Because then on the short trips you don't have to carry a great big... More than that actually, it's on the long trips where you have a failure and you have a crack in a tank, you've got a serious got problem yeah. if you only have one tank. So that's kind of the thought behind it. Yeah. I would like to, I, I'm still thinking that we should persevere with the idea of having it in the best possible place weight wise and also using this space low down right behind the seats which is really good for nothing. Yeah, the fridge is going in the middle, Yeah. Um, can that be raised up at all? No. It can't. Absolutely it not. Can't. Otherwise you're driving like this. It gets this. too much. It, yeah. it has to be as low as possible. We, in fact we have to cut the bracket that Toyota has put in there for the centre console they put in. We actually have to cut that bracket off to get it down. To get it down. Right. So the only way we could go is around it. But we can go higher with the tank. You can go what, higher with the tank. What's restricting No, you can go higher. go higher with the tank. Yeah. You can. Definitely. So we could go narrower and higher. Yes. And then wrap around. Yes. Which is good. But you have to watch how many angles and returns and stuff you put well, on. Well, I'm looking it, at this tank here. I'm looking at this tank here. Yeah. This tank here You're with this design this spun. Spun. Yeah. Yeah. 90 degrees this way. That's both would be about both sides would be about this big ish yep. slightly narrower but both would be this size and the back would probably be about that width so it would be and it would be a bit higher than this i would say the back could go quite a bit wider there because like we say I, we're I talking about that dead area yes i agree i think we should draw this out and see what it looks like yeah we've got a we've got the little snowmaster 12 liter which is going to go in the center yep we should put that in so get the position right governed by the handbrake because it can't go any further forward than the handbrake and then build a box mm. of where the tank will go and yep. then and then work out what its capacity what is going to be and hopefully it'll be well we want to try and get it to 100 but if it's not 100 
we can make another plan but let's see how big it is yep okay let me try that i think that's worth working on to get yep. that right yeah because i'm that not that convinced affects a lot of what's happening yeah coming back into the yeah. units especially in that area where the fridge and yeah. power I, th I just feel this one is using too much of the really useful real estate yeah where it could use the use less useful real estate and get its weight forward oh definitely all right actually we've made progress today it's been good yeah it's been really good i'm actually very excited about it very excited about it actually so i'm going to leave it to you i'm going to come back and i don't know will you must give me a call and i'll come back and i'll bring the cameras back and yeah we'll do the and by then maybe you'll have the skeleton yeah yeah and sure then and then we can take up this discussion from that point once, yeah. once we've got a skeleton to yeah because i can make all this I can make all the frame up. Yeah. Um because I know my lengths. Um because that's still fine at that length. Many of you will know that um I actually build a small number of these troop carriers for clients. Autograph Overland. And this is a development for Autograph Overland. And but I'm going a little bit further than what I did before. People would come to me and I'd build them a vehicle based on all the experience I had with my troop carrier. This product, however, will not only go into my autograph builds, but it'll also be, and our idea is to actually have a standalone kit that anybody can buy, install themselves, or have a fitment center install it for them. So I, rega I reckon, you know, if we get the design right, why limit it to just those people that build a vehicle using my services? Thank you so much for watching. These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. Join our Patreon family now.